Hey guys, Novus here, and welcome back to From the Depths. So, um, just quickly went through the battle troop. That episode should be coming out today, and hopefully so should this one. So, I kind of came up with a weird new um, design last night. I'm trying to think where is it. I've done a couple of different things lately um, that I've been mucking around with on this side. Now, one of them was this, so now that we can get kind of air superiority from our fighter, that new large fighter with the gun on it and so forth, it can actually properly dogfight and should be set, we didn't really need this thing to be sort of an, a missile based fighter anymore. So I did a little bit of fiddling with it. And now we have a little version and a normal version of the normal version. I need to rip a couple things out. Um, but I probably shouldn't be dumping myself into the seat of these. Okay, so grab like three of those out. So they're only 10k each. They cost nothing to build. Now, I'm not going to put it against something like a judgment because that will spray out shots. But something that's not great in terms of its uh, anti air defense they can deal with. Now I believe they should even be able to deal with this. I haven't actually tested it with this, but let's see. Um, they should be fine though, from what I'm aware. Uh, it's, it's got a bit of anti-air stuff, but shouldn't be too drastic. Um, I still need to fiddle as well with it because it still needs its um, escape angle changing to 90 degrees instead of 180 so it won't just spin around and try and run in a straight line away. I'll actually sort of move around and dodge a bit better. Ooh, there goes that one. So they do seem to be flying in closer than they should be. But yeah, it's something I just needed a little bit more fiddling with. But the idea is they're now running torpedoes. Um, they should have a one turn on them. Though I may have ended up ripping them out. I cannot remember 100%, but looking at the ones that were sailing off that away, I'd say so. But the important part is just kind of seeing how much damage they do if we can get past these lambs. Okay, so they're going to have a tough time of it. Okay, yeah, so anything that big, yeah, they're not going to be able to do it with. Alright. Fair enough. Good to know. Um, so what I was testing them with was sort of more so different enemies. Now, uh, yeah, it turns out anything has decent lambs on it. Um, there's a missile code that I've been trying to muck around with. I'm trying to get it working right. And the I, I had it so close to working at one point, but the only issue it was running into at that point let me just grab something heavy from here just so we can throw torpedoes at it and show you what I mean. But, um, yeah, I was, that got it very close to working. The only problem I ended up with at one point was that it kept targeting the back ends of enemy vehicles, which was annoying. But, yeah, so the reason I was mucking around with these is, as you can see, individual torpedoes do quite a bit of damage. But, as you can also see from when it was fighting a second ago, without shielding, like fighters like these aren't going to be of any use. And it's throwing torpedoes in the wrong direction, god damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like they should all be calibrated so it's never fire while facing the other way, but I don't know. I guess they initiated firing while facing this direction, then turned and threw their torpedoes around the place. But yeah, so it's just kind of a constant torpedoing for 10k each. It's pretty decent how many torpedoes they can get out, 8 each. So if you get 5 of them out for 50k, I mean you've got like 40 torpedoes coming out at the enemy at a time. It's pretty decent. So as you can see it can do some fairly decent damage or something like that. Alright, now let's destroy all vehicles. Now, the main thing um, that I want to show you is, so, 
We could summon another one of those out, but we could also summon something much, much, much tougher out. Doesn't really matter. Although this thing still needs a lot of work. I just quickly slapped it together last night. The idea is it's that submarine that I've been meaning to work on. Now, I was going to record the whole build session, but it just kind of happened spur of the moment last night. I'd been meaning to do it for a while, and suddenly I just sort of hit this moment where it's like I need to work on something other than the battleship briefly. And, I don't know, it all just kind of came together in my head in the moment. You know when you sort of have those moments where it's just like, ooh, this, and you got to build it there and then? What is that? Um, where'd I put it? Trying to find it now. Actually, no, it was here. Of course. Alright. So it's a bit funky looking, and it's still not set up. But, we have a submarine, and you can totally nose down. There's already an enemy. I didn't consider that. Whoops. Okay, so it's already fine. As you can see, this panel's here. They still need painting. But, uh, this is what she does. It's actually really cool to watch. Briefly after it ends, it starts back up again. So, that's pretty much what she does. It's kind of gross. Um, <laughs> the problem, as you can see, is ammo. And that would be because I've got material... Yeah, okay, alright. Turned off material generation so we weren't getting any ammo supplies. My bad. Okay, it should have kept firing. They kind of keep... Like, I've had it set up in a state where... It should have been producing enough ammo to kind of just keep firing. Like, along with enough ammo storage and so forth. It was a bit... It was working last night. But anyway. <laughs> the important part is... It shouldn't need more than one bullet. It's, uh... See in a moment. Pushes summon in a couple of ships. But, uh, we'll kind of slowly disappear the underside of their ship. This kind of just renders naval vessels into shrapnel. Um, that's a big clump of torpedoes. Jesus. I don't know why that happened, but that's fine. There is, uh, a decent number of them. So it does even work better when it's up against multiple enemy vessels. Um, but one really large one, yeah, it can kind of really spam those torpedoes out of them. Now another way to view this, which is also pretty cool, this way. So you can see it, the volume going down, you can see its cost going down, you see the absolute spray of torpedoes coming out. Pretty much just doesn't stop. Um, yeah. I'll then show off the ship itself a bit more in a sec. I do want to keep an eye out for when this thing's going to disintegrate because I do want to go back to the ship as it was something cool I wanted to show you guys when that occurs. But yeah, as you can see, it's just brutal. There goes the AI. So yeah, um, now this can totally be used against things that do have lands, because to be perfectly honest, good luck. Uh, <laughs> there's enough torpedoes that some will get through, and sometimes, as you can see, they kind of clump up. And like, good luck getting rid of all of those before some of them make contact. And the more of them that make contact, the more weakened your ship will get, and the spray literally doesn't stop. So, yeah. Only problem with it, it's a bit costly in materials to do so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, now we're getting hit. Uh, oh, whoops. That's right, I forgot I needed to adjust this. I'm gonna need to summon a fresh one. Okay, give me one sec. Um, there we go. So it's a little expensive at 83k. Now, it still needs a bunch of work. I kind of wanted to segment these off into little torpedo rooms so that they can't ch 
chain reaction detonate, as that's kind of horrifying. But, yeah. So we've got 203, I believe it is, torpedoes down here. Now I want to set a couple of them to be anti-torpedo torpedoes. But you can see here, we've got spinners. So that's how it was opening up. The idea is, can uh, test that out now. So if I was to deactivate this and hit test on that, extends out to the side. Then we've got see, this one, this one that activates just after. Okay, this was actually meant to be on a one second delay. Whoops. Okay, that was my bad. But yeah, then they open up and Bob's your uncle. Fires all its torpedoes out. Now we've got space for more torpedoes. That's what's crazy. Is And this is set to the minimum delay between launches. So, I mean, any more torpedoes and they won't actually end up firing out of the... Yeah. So I'm thinking what I could do is split it down the middle and separate them into two separate torpedo bays. So that way there's less likelihood of them all getting detonated together. And extend them all up a block. And in doing that, I should hopefully take it to the point where it's basically doing the same thing, just with four launches instead of two. Um, well, sorry, two sets, because they'd still be connected in the center, but I don't know. That's fine. Um, yeah, so that's how that's set up. Then we've got at the back here, all our propulsion. And we've got a whole bunch of these brothers, and because of that, she can move pretty damn well in terms of being able to turn around. Now on top of the rudders at the back we've also got at the front some uh, steering propellers. So we've got one here and one here tucked into the armor. Um, these sit in the main control room so you can actually see them chilling out here. Um, underneath we've got these currently sitting there but I kind of wanted to set up all of this to be controlled via sort of, um, I can't remember the name of it now, but the advanced, sorry, complex control. And with that, I could set these up to sort of double task. So these could be pitching thrusters as well as rolling thrusters. And as could the back and so forth. Um, in which case, I could just rip the three propellers off the back and front. And it'll just be one nice, smooth, yeah. Um, so at the moment, we've also got on the top here, rolling thrusters, and at the back and front, at the bottom. Um, we've also got, yeah, the propellers at the back here are all tucked into the armor, so we have, is it six, seven, eight, yeah, eight propellers propelling us forwards. And thanks to that, it can actually move really well. There's no, um, what do you call them? I think I've forgotten the name. Um, yeah, no data blades. Or hella blades or anything like that. Nothing like that's going on. Um, it's all just standard. And let me close this up. Yeah, I need to set more of a delay on this as well. Enable test. Well, actually, I don't even need to hit test. What am I doing? So then it closes up and folds in. Now, because there usually wouldn't be a delay between me hitting the two buttons, it actually goes a lot smoother than normally. But it's pretty nice. I just need to set a longer delay on both because uh, <laughs> detonating torpedoes is bad. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much... Oh yeah, um, that's not it, that's right. Okay, so back here is sort of where we got our ammo and ammo production. This isn't meant to stay here. This was just temporarily slapped in, but it's just a crap ton of RTGs and batteries, and it is what's bumping its cost up quite a bit. So what we got going on is, I believe it's three back? Yep. 
So they go three back, and the batteries and the RTGs are the four blocks. So, yeah. That means there's like, what, 24 RTGs, I believe? And like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of RTGs. But each of those is worth uh, 750. Yeah, so that's why they would be contributing to a lot of the costs. But I was thinking of setting it over to maybe fuel based with uh, standard engines and such because I've got a good space here and it's not, I'm not sort of cut down in like the width and height and so forth in any really annoying manner. I should be able to get some really good engines going in this space. If I can, I think I might even try and separate them down the middle with the walls, so that way they've got to knock out both engines to stop us. Try and set up shielding, and then Bob's your uncle. We don't need lambs or anything like that. The idea is supposed to be that when it's going to be getting into combat, because before it's getting into combat, we go full water drive and we can actually and get it to sit right. There we go. We can move at a pretty hefty pace. We can turn around and sort of chase stuff down and then once it's sort of time for combat to go down she lowers down and into the water Bob's your uncle down you go you can keep an eye on your altitude on the right there you can keep an eye on your um, you can keep an eye on your roll your pitch all that stuff there you can totally maneuver the ship around underwater as well. It kind of sounds like you'd expect a plane to fly, essentially. It rolls, it pitches, it does all that good stuff. Um, the problem is, some land kind of tends to reach up a bit high. <laughs> so that's a bit how's it going. It's got a bit of a, a, bit of a funky shape. Um, initially, it was just sort of that central body there. But kind of had, yeah, I needed roll and pitch and all that stuff, so I kind of put those little wings at the front and back. It looked a little odd, and I kind of wanted some stuff to sort of armor up over where the torpedo bays were going as well, so I sort of went, you know what, stuff, let's make it into wings that just run the entire length. And just have them sort of extend out and fold out, and yeah, that's sort of how it ended up. But, um, Yes, I'm quite pleased with it, and it can really just maneuver nicely underwater. And once it's down here, I mean, anything that's shooting crams, good luck, because as far as I'm aware, they'd have a hell of a time, because they're heavy and slow, which means the drag is going to heavily affect them, um, as they basically just end up wanting to sort of sink down to the depths. Whereas, ooh, this is going to be close. Okay, roll and pitch. And that's that's the advantage to that. The fact that we can kind of roll is if we need to, if there's like a tiny narrow gap to get through or whatever, you can put it on its side and just slip it between two mountains or whatever. So that's yeah, it's definitely something that can be done. You just have to take note of the fact that, you know, it is very wide. Also, it does try to balance itself back out um, with the PID at the moment. But it's set very low so that way you have control and then when you let go, I'm not touching anything right now, it should bounce itself. Now it's not going to do a great job because it's set down so low and in a way so to allow you to control it. As you can see there's a bit of overshoot and it'll sort of have to try and fight itself back. <laughs> but it's really not a big deal. Um, it ends up level and it's just to allow you to still have full control of the vehicle. Um, at the same time, that's hooked up to the AI. So if you turned off the AI, as far as I'm aware, you could then roll the vehicle and it would stay. And that's just where you're at. Hit combat, hope your uncle, it'll stabilize itself again. So that was one thing that like, I always, it bugged me before when I first tried building a submarine way, way, way back when I was first starting out with this game, and 
it was just impossible to really get something I could very well handle down here at all. Um, once stuff got below the water level, it was just very, very difficult to handle and control and not run into stuff and not get a bit disorientated under the water and so forth. But I feel like because of the shape of this, it's also very easy to tell which side's up. It's just a big flat surface. Um, it's like a fairly hefty ship in terms of size when it comes down to it, but it can maneuver really well down here and because of how flat it is it can stick really low down which means even in shallower areas like we're sailing around in at the moment she can still well and truly get down here so yeah um that's pretty much where this thing's at it needs a bunch of work but yeah i'm looking at building up a whole bunch of new designs like these and it's coming out with a bunch of different ships I can sort of slowly be worked on. Um, be able to bring out something like that bulwark that I was messing around with before with the lambs. Just hit stop. Rob's your uncle, you can see it all open up. We're totally already being shot at. <laughs> okay, so I did stop this, but I'm gonna start her up again. Now we begin evasive maneuvers underwater. But as you can see, good luck with the lambs breaking all of these torpedoes. Um, she doesn't have shielding yet, but once she does, that'll be good. It could also still use more ammo production, as you can see, but it'll just kind of keep firing the torpedoes anyway. Does an alright job of it. So I'm seeing it. Is. So back down, and yes, yeah, so it's very hard to actually detect her and deal with her. Um, it's currently set in combat mode, so I'm going to switch it to on, so it doesn't try and take control so much. And then let's just chill her out for a sec, take a look, let's see what kind of shape it's in. How has it done with landing all of our torpedoes? Oh, it hasn't. <laughs> deal with that and then whoop, nope please don't surface <laughs> all right let's kick it back in so we can start moving away from these shots but as I said once it's got shielding it could even sit on the surface in these kinds of circumstances at least to a degree and be fine at the same time its ability to dive suddenly means it can go under shots like that so that's why I said like Cram shots shouldn't be an issue for us. Um, we should be fine in terms of that. And at the same time, torpedoes are really good in the sense of they control themselves so they can freely move around, which means if we were to... So I'm going to set something up for... Um, what do you call them? Like the air pumps and so forth to be in the ship and be able to do stuff. But, yeah... It can basically, it should be able to end up sitting down under the water in a place like this and just like harrying torpedoes out of them. Um, find an area where you've got like a big section of land that juts up. And you can even actually park your ship and hide behind it and just start lobbing torpedoes out. At that point, like good luck. They gotta try and shoot through the mountain. Now, things can be a little glitchy in this game, so I mean that could still end up happening, but. It shouldn't. <laughs> um, so yeah, even anything that does have a whole bunch of lambs on it, it's going to have a tough time trying to keep its energy up enough to be able to be firing through water, because water does make it much more difficult, and trying to break these torpedoes. Now, I do feel like, even with how deep down they are at the moment, I might want to try and set them up so that they try and sit deeper and have them hang out like 50 meters below or something so that way it's even further for the lasers to have to try and get through. As you can see it sort of just slowly disintegrates the ship and is in basically no danger as it does so. Um, so that was pretty much the idea. Set up a submarine that can kind of go out and start hunting ships down. It moves alright under the water. 
11.5 meters per second. I mean, that's not too bad for sort of like at that point, no matter how deep we go, that's how quickly we move. And I've been really looking forward to getting a submarine set up because we're getting close to the Cauldron of Erowick, which is where it gets deep. And like it's sort of the deepest parts of the planet, as far as I'm aware, are in that location. We're out in the storms and so forth. So I mean, seeing around and seeing the enemy and all the rest of it would be almost impossible. One thing that can be a problem, you can sort of sometimes misjudge just how close the nose is to things, unless you're sitting in here. And then it's suddenly like, whoa. <laughs> but uh, it can be a little How's it going for accidentally running into things? And because you've just got a glass panel on the front here, it can pretty easily be busted open. But I thought it was kind of aesthetically pleasing being able to look out the front, see where you're going, and uh, control the ship from here. You see shrapnel occasionally. I think it's getting in my ship. It's at the very least just sort of hitting the sides. Fair enough. But yeah, so that's how it do. Swap it back to combat mode and let it do its thing. It is meant to sit fairly hefty range and kind of try and stay away from the opponent. Just keep throwing those torpedoes out. Um, so if you look at its health now, it's already down to 91%. And yeah, don't forget, this thing had lands out the rear end, but we've now managed to actually hit in and take out areas, I believe, where. Um, yeah, we've actually managed to get in there and open up areas where the blaze was actually running before, which means the slams are offline. So this stage is basically just crippled and ready to be finished. Um, a sub should be really, really easy able to handle it. Should just sort of sail around. And not do things like that. Oh, really? You had one job AI. That's to not do stuff like that. Okay, so let's hit J and try and. Oh, my headset's dying. Why is it doing that? It should be charged. There goes the detonation I was talking about before, so things can well and truly chain react and when they do, all of our torpedoes go down. So that is a weakness it has. Now once it has shielding, you know, that shouldn't happen. Um, at the same time, once it's set up to actually sort of chill out and stay below the waterline and hug the sort of terrain, I guess, it should also do a lot better then. But it's basically, it's won this fight anyway. So what I'll just one second quickly do is I'll show you what I mean. So if I was to please <laughs> let's go over to here. Break. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. These these are the the deep dark seas. And this goes pretty deep. I mean pretty deep. Um yeah, so if we were to come out here in a submarine, I mean, we're going a long way down. Um, can't see the surface, can't see the bottom, kind of deep. So these are the deeper parts of the planet. This is where we basically want to be setting up submarines. At this point, seeing something like this, even with it being set up with the uh, the white strips on it and so forth, would be very difficult. Sorry, one sec, guys. Let's go put the headset in. Well, that's going to turn up on me. Okay, so basically at this stage I was hoping that this thing could be set up to sit basically like a thousand meters down. Now I've had some problems with trying to set up PIDs to actually control her altitude and actually drive it down, but I might just need to muck around with it a bit more. Um, but yeah, when I set it up like that before, it just wasn't taking control of anything. I was like, wait, what? 
So from here, it's very difficult to tell how deep down we are. From here, it becomes, well, not too far off the same situation. I mean, we very quickly lose that. Now all we have, this is where proper submarining comes into play, is we have the balancing for the from our combat AI, and on the right we have a whole bunch of numbers. So our pitch, we're currently at minus 17, so we're still diving, we pop it down a bit more if we want. And then when we're ready, we can level it out, so let's say 250 meters. So now our pitch is down to zero, and we are chilling out at 250 meters down. Pitch has gone up a bit, so just that slightly. And yeah, so it should be able to basically do its thing down here. Um, I gotta try and set up the pitching, because it wasn't willing to work with that. And that's it. This thing can totally just hang out down here, and if an enemy turns up, Pops your uncle, it should open up its side panels all the way down here and start firing torpedoes. It's basically a case of good luck. Because anything that's trying to target us down here is going to have a rough time of it. We can continue to dive if we wish. Whoa, we found the surface suddenly. Okay. So here we are on the seabed. I mean, on the seabed, because <laughs> just hit the panels. Um, yeah, so we can totally just chill out down here, and it's pretty much a case of good luck to anything that tries to shoot us down here. It's a long way to try and travel any kind of rounds through. They'll just sink down to the seabed well before they hit us. We're only 270 meters down. This is nowhere near the deepest part of the cauldron of Eric. Now, I believe down that way is actually towards like deeper areas, down towards the southern end. But yeah, so this is pretty much what she'll do, and you know, anywhere where it does get deeper as well, she's totally capable of just turning herself around a bit, heading down there. You keep an eye on the values on the right, and it'll give you an idea of how quickly you're diving, how deep you're actually diving to, keep an eye on the terrain and so forth, and yeah, that's pretty straightforward, so that's pretty much how I set, had to set up. Um, so I'm going to set up power generation better, so I'm going to set up a bit more um, ammo generation, I guess, just to keep it pumping out those torpedoes. At the proper rate, we're now grinding along with <laughs> the ground. <laughs> Whoops. So yeah, um, that's pretty much all it do. And at the same time, it should, oh yeah, from down here, be able to land even better shots than it was before. Because the idea is these torpedoes are coming from way down below. So trying to hit with any kind of lands is going to be a real pain. It looks like we've totally shut their lands down already as well. And trying to detect the torpedoes without passive sonars. I mean, if you've got passive sonars, they're on the surface. If you've got passive sonars, you're pretty quickly going to get busted up by the explosives. Now, they are still totally trying to shoot at us. Um, they'll probably start getting more accurate as we started rising up and out of the water a bit, but at the same time, minus 370 meters, like we're still down there. <laughs> it's still basically a case of good luck hitting us, we're going to be down here and not dealing with their crap. <laughs> so I think this should pretty much be able to secure the, the seas for us. We've got our air superiority fighter ready to kind of maintain superiority in the sky and allow us to start getting out some bombers and so forth. I wanted to try and work on Lotus next, some kind of real high speed bomber that might even actually go up in a higher atmosphere and take advantage of dropping bombers way, way down with APN guidance. Um, I feel like that would be pretty effective. 
But as it stands, this submarine can, uh, yeah, can definitely go out and do what it needs to do with hunting down the enemy craft. Now, as you can see, that's what happens when you try and throw cram shots at them. It's just not going to work. And even your standard sort of the shrapnel and so forth, it can't reach properly even normally. I mean, it's it's a long way for them to be trying to shoot with such small shots. But trying to shoot this thing at almost 350 meters below the surface, it's not going to happen. <laughs> as soon as those things hit the water, they just slow like crazy. And their already short range becomes much shorter. And they just drop. So yeah, we pretty much got perfect defense against that. We need shielding on top of that, and so that way anything is set up that can travel through water, because they're around things set up that can go through the water, it's not some kind of cheap tactic, you can just get away with anything. Ew. <laughs> there are guns that can shoot through the water, and the Judgment has one, I believe. Um, there are a few different ships that actually do have guns that can fire through the water. And there's even an enemy submarine that can try and do it. But good luck. <laughs> <laughs> There's way too many torpedoes for that thing to handle, it'll just disintegrate. But, yeah. Um, any of that sort of stuff, that's where we'll have the shields. And once that's set up, we're pretty much immune. I mean, anything short of torpedoes, and at that point I've just got to set a couple of sonars, which I was already prepared to do. And they're going to go into the AI room in here. It's a couple of sonar detector things, and it was going to fire probably like three off of each side. One at the front, one at the center, and one at the back. Just get changed over as different torpedoes, and Bob's your uncle. We will pretty much be immune to the enemy. Um, I was originally going to do this out of lightweight alloy, but the whole thing is steel. So if it does get hit, it's actually not in trouble. Um, it's just if these get hit. So that's why really all it needs at the moment is just a shield that covers that panel. So that's why I was thinking of having a split in the middle somewhere, breaking them off into two sets of torpedoes, and somewhere in that break in the middle sort of a dealio, have a shield set up that'll just cover the entire length on both sides, and that way nothing can get through. We can have an outer shield um, out here as well, covering the entire side of the ship, and at that point they've got to try and hit their detonate through the shrapnel through, it'll hit that shield, bounce off, and we're safe. Then we've got steel over the rest, and we should be good. Um, but yeah, it, like areas like this, it's safe. I mean, we're actually pretty damn safe despite having a window on the front. <laughs> like, we're fairly protected. So, I guess that's it for now. Um, I've gone a little bit over. I've been rambling a bit here, but I was, I was really happy with this one. I quite liked this design, um, especially in terms of its effectiveness and how quickly it's become effective. It's just almost immediately ready. It doesn't need detection. It has detection. It doesn't. I think it has detection. No, actually, it doesn't even have any detection now that I think about it. Um, but it is going to get passive sonar. So that way it can detect the enemy's torpedoes and counter torpedo them. But yeah, that should be fine. Um, it's the only thing it should need outside of shields. And then it's, just, it's got all of its defenses, it's got all of its offense, it's got everything. And that'll be right. So, yeah, quick and simple design. <sighs> um, I believe, yeah, all I got is I do have a pitch controller, but again, it's just not doing anything. I fiddled with it a bunch to try and even set it up, and it didn't do anything. I have no idea. It doesn't actually have an output from what I can tell. Um, but that shouldn't be the case because it's totally got these so it should be trying to use those standard thrusters and as far as I'm aware it should even try and use rolling thrusters for it but I don't know. It's fine. It's all good. Just needs a bit more work. But there we go. That is how we sink and then eventually disintegrate one of these ships. And the reason I'm summoning this one is because it's very, very, very heavily armored on the bottom and such, so it would be able to take like a lot of torpedoes before it would go down. But at the same time, it had those lamps, so you could see that they weren't going to work. There's no defending against these with those lamps, not when they're coming from this deep down. And uh, yeah, so that should 
be able to hold this territory for us once we get out here because we're currently situated we've taken over this whole territory in the campaign from memory and so with that taken we needed to push up into here to try and start taking on these white players and this ship should be able to do it anything naval out there is getting wrecked then we just got to get our AA destroyers out there once they're fully customized and optimized and so forth Bob's your uncle we should be able to hold the air and the sea and then we get our fighters out there as well get the battleship prowling our territory and Bob's your uncle we should be fully safe um, at that point we can focus on pushing forwards with these other vehicles that I'm coming up with now and the battleship will hold our territory so yeah a bit rambly but just wanted to make sure I showed off all the different stuff and really got across um, sort of I guess what the future plans were with this so I was thinking from now on is I'm gonna be maybe doubling my efforts to try and make certain that I'm actually recording these things when I'm doing them when I'm first building these builds and so forth but I'm going to be trying to come up with a whole bunch of new hull designs and so forth next after this one because I've gotten each of the different roles that I needed filled filled. Now I want to come up with variations for filling all the different roles so what I'm going to do is come up with a whole bunch of different sinking air units next, a um, bunch of different plane designs for different hulls and so forth and then sort of just work on each of them um, sort of bouncing back and forth between them in the construction episode so that way we don't get stuck on a single build and have it be too repetitive or I, d I don't want it to get boring I don't want it to yeah get tedious with it so what I'd rather do is try and make certain that instead I'm bouncing between different builds here and there so I might do a hull for one ship and then start doing a hull for another ship in the next set of construction episodes before moving on to sort of doing the insides for the previous ship and to start bouncing back and forth between lots of different builds and it should also mean that there's more content coming out so the things you aren't interested in you can skip over those but still have other ships that are also coming out at the same time that you can look over and so forth um and yeah should be cool hmm. kind of tempted to do that now that looks all right so yeah that's pretty much where this thing's at and where the battleship's at it should be in the campaign very soon and yeah pretty much done so hope you guys enjoyed um and i hope you guys are looking forward to seeing some of these new designs i'm definitely looking forward to making them coming up with a bunch of different stuff and yeah trying to also get the scene sorted so I'll be recording the episodes where I work on this I'll probably be redoing all the power trying to add a bit more ammo production in probably just tuck them in on these side parts here straight onto the sides on either side and then maybe put another layer of armor on the side here just to make sure this is good and protected but it doesn't matter it's not needed because the one really big upside to these is it does give us like a crap ton of armor on the sides there those wings I mean there's a lot to try and get through if you're trying to hit a side on you have to come from the top or the bottom and the top thankfully has a layer of heavy armor to sort of bleed through now, I need to move this down a block because it was only going to be one block wide like that thick was the armor on the outside here originally and then I, it went to two blocks and so I've got to try and make the inner block the heavy armor so that way it bleeds through to here but also reaches all the way out to these here so that'll be an entire like flat layer on the top there that'll be getting the bleed through from the heavy armor and then also the stuff sitting on top of it so yeah that's where it'll be getting a little bit of an uh, upgrade in terms of its armor but apart from that the top side is very tough the sides even tougher and then the underside is fairly tough itself now I believe it's also double layered yeah so I mean getting in on any side of this is going to be tough the bottom side is your best bet because you can hit stuff that's sort of sitting on the floor but at the same time it's going to be the hardest spot to hit because it's always going to be flat against the seabed so getting anything underneath it to hit it is, is not going to happen you pretty much have to try and hit it on the top of the sides which also means that shielding is going to be a lot easier we can just put shields on the top and a little bit on the sides but for the most part we should be able to have them sort of just on a slant there reaching down towards the seabed 
and the whole idea is this thing will sort of scoot along the surface. Um, I also need to start coming up with some names for these ships. So, I don't know, I was thinking maybe of calling something, like calling this one something like a Stingray. Just because of how wide and flat it is and sort of thin the entire way along and the fact that it's going to be sort of hugging along the seabed and just sort of scooting itself along around there. I was thinking maybe something like that. But, I don't know, maybe something more like, um, I think, it's, I think it's a scuttlefish that does something like that. It kind of just scuttles along the surface of the water. Might even be something to name it. I don't know. I was thinking something along those lines just to sort of be apt to what it does. And yeah. So, yeah. That's pretty much it for now. Um, and yeah. yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing the new builds. And yeah. That's pretty much it for now. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one, guys.